Hi everyone, this is Yvette and I'm going to start uh, this video again because uh, we're thinking that, that we were like already uh, seeing each other but it looks like uh, we didn't. So let me uh, start this video again and I'm going to uh, show with you and share with you this new painting. Let me just flip this picture over there. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Yvette. So, um, sorry, this is what like a, a technical issue, but we're here, so please let me know if you can see me now. So I hope you guys can see me now. So yes, today we're going to be painting this snowman, but it's going to be with a little different like details, easier to handle, okay? And let me introduce you Willie. Willie is my friend. He all the time is telling me what to do. And we're going to be working with you today. So the idea for today is that you're going to learn to paint a snowman. You're going to learn how to paint actually snow. And you're going to learn how to paint a pine cone with the snow. So what we don't start, thank you for coming. Hi Janie, hi Barbara, hello Holly, hi Heather. Thank you guys, thank you for staying here. So let me show you and introduce some of the uh, brushes that we're going to be using today. So today I have this flat brush that is number six or or three, four, all depend the brand that you, you have in your, in your collection. Also I have this flat brush that it can be a number 12 or eight but also it's a one inch, the one that you use to paint your, your walls. Then I have a long run. Hi Chris, thank you for coming. I have a long run number six. Then I have a small, a small, a small one, this is a number two. It's a run number two. Then I have these two liners. This is a new one, I'm very excited to use it. And this is a regular one, number three slash zero. And this is, 20 slash zero so if you notice the the points are different this is more like a flat and this is a very long pointed one so i'm super excited to use it and then i have this new as well is <laughs> is a short filver and the difference between the brushes is just how they are the ending this is like a totally rounded so it's different than the long round here you can see the two difference okay and the last one i don't know if you have it and it's going to be our fan fan brush and if you don't have it it's okay because we can be working with our round fever one okay so let's talk let's talk about the paintings okay so let me show you the paintings so for today paintings we are going to be using the, the red that is the naphtal red or super light red hi helen then this is a yellow is our uh, cadmium yellow and this is a um, yellow ochre and if you don't want a yellow ochre don't worry because we're going to be if you mix the yellow ochre with the amber with the burnt amber you are going to uh, arrive to this tone then this blue is the fallow blue and this is our cobalt blue this is a hawker green white and black so i was like mixing some of my white with the cobalt blue here because i want to start painting the background before i start painting the background you need to decide where the high line of the horizon is going to be okay and in this uh, case, I decide just like to have like a straight line and then a little curve, like, like a little hill. But this time I wanna just do something a little different. So what I'm going to do is to have this little like line. It's not a straight, it's like a face in a little bit to, the, to your right. And what I'm going to be doing first, I'm going to be adding to my flat brush a little bit of water And now I'm going to be adding the white in the top of my canvas. 
from left to right, back and forth. If you feel like uh, the paint is not moving correctly, just add a little bit of water to, the, to your bristles and then keep moving, okay? Back and forth, back and forth. You can be doing this with this brush or you can be doing as well with this. When you are painting backgrounds, just solid flat background, I recommend you to use a bigger flat brush. Let's, let me show you how it works. Because your strokes are going to be longer and thicker. Then let me just grab a little bit of water here. And now it's time to use my combination of white with my cobalt blue. A little bit of water. Then I want you to grab a little bit straight of your cobalt blue. With a little bit of water again, we're going to start from the bottom. And I'm going to be moving and going to to the top of the uh, Keep moving to the top of, of the canvas because we want to have this like a smooth blending transition. I'm going to grab a little bit of more water and I'm going to go back. Okay, when we are here. I want you guys to grab a little bit of the red, just a tiny, tiny bit of the red, just the tip. Hi, Beverly. And I'm going to mix it with the white and the cobalt blue that I have it here before. And I want to grab a little bit more of my cobalt blue because I want to have this beautiful purple. There you go, it's coming, it's coming, guys. Oh yeah, thank you, Heather. Yeah, it's important, thumbs, thumbs up is going to help to the artist. <laughs> thank you, Heather. So here we have this beautiful purple, okay? And now I'm going to go back to my flat number six and load load your brush and start moving the paint again don't push too much your br your brush because you want to have a soft transition okay and you don't want to have uh, strokes or lines and by doing this you're going to have this beautiful air uh, I want to say purple, smooth and gentle color, okay? So whatever colors you add in your background, in some point we're going to be in need to add in some areas in our snow. That is something that we need to remember. I have my slow dry medium that I want to add a little bit here because I want to keep this color. And let me just read to you guys. Oh, well, thank you for subscribing. Yeah, it's important. And when you subscribe, it, there is a little bell. And if you touch the bell, uh, you will be notified each time that I uh, upload a new video. Okay. So to this color, I want to separate just a little bit because I want to grab a little in the tip of my knife I want to add a little bit of the fallow blue and I want to mix it hi Marvin good to see you here 
So by doing this, we're going to have we're going to be in the same tones of the purple, but now I want to have like a darker, a little darker tone, and you will see why. Let me show you. Okay. Let me show you. So here in the original painting, we have these two two pines in the background. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing like a blurry uh, pines in the background and just one big pine in your right side, okay? So how we're going to be doing this, so you can use two, two brushes. You can use your, your fan brush or your long run, okay? So I'm going to just grab a little bit of the paint And I'm going to just tap, 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 like this, and then like this. And what I, what we want is just like a shadow or something that is there. We don't want to have everything the same line, like the same height. But we want to have a very smooth transition. Let's suppose there are pines, and but you, we can just see some of the shadows. We cannot see more than that. A little bit of water, just to the tip of my bristles. Hola, buenas tardes. Gracias por venir. Estoy haciendo el background de esta pintura en acrílicos. Uh, más adelante le voy a poner los, cap uh, los uh, subtítulos este fin de semana. Gracias por venir. So yes, guys, next. Uh, this weekend I'm going to be adding some uh, closed captions to this video. Like that our friends from uh, Latin America or Hispano America are going to be able to uh, follow this tutorial. Okay? Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my brush in the water. And what I'm going to be doing now, I'm going to take out my tape. And there you go, guys. We have a very clean line. Hi, Helen. Hi, Lisa. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start working the background of the snow. But for that, I would like just to sketch a little bit the snowman, like that we will know exactly where he's going to be. So I have, I have here my guy, and I'm going to be using my small brush. Let me just clean it, because I was using some of the brown before. And you can use like a very thin brush or you can use even a pencil, or whatever works good for you. So this is how we're going to be doing. So I'm going to grab a little bit of water. And for the sketch, hi Chrissy, I'm going to use the same color that we used before, this purple. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to do The first part is going to be his face. So I want to have his, his, his face more like in an oval shape. And this canvas is bigger than the canvas that I used before. So that's why we have more space to cover. This guy, I want him to have a beautiful cheeks, okay? So then, he has another part of his body here. And then the last part. Okay. Then he has his hat. 
so I'm going to put like a, a little dot here and a little dot here and his hat is going to be this way and then we're going to trace the out outlines and from here I want to just add a little bit of black to the mix to make this like a light gray let me check on you guys so Angie the patterns are only for my patrons so if you would like to join my patron it's a club that we have here is where you can find the patterns from all the paintings acrylic and watercolor paintings that I'm going to be sharing here in my um, YouTube channel so but what something that you can do guys is uh, to watch this video again and to try to sketch it so let me just grab a little bit more black to make this dark gray yeah the good thing of the snowmen are not perfect good point Heather and I think when you try to sketch and, and draw your own painting you will feel more like satisfied it So there you go. We have the sketch, okay? Later on, after we paint the, the, the snow, we can paint the, the pine and uh, the pine tree with the snow. And at the end, we're going to be painting our guy, okay? So let me just clean my brush and read to you guys to check on you. Yes, uh, sometimes a uh, patron act a little weird, but the good thing is that we can connect each other and w I can send you direct all, all the uh, drawings direct to your mail, okay? You know guys, I think when we're painting, the most important part for me is do not be afraid because this is something that you need to enjoy to do it and there is not something that people is going to give you a, you know, a grade. The, the, for me, the most important part, the most important part is that you try it. And as I told to my students, the first time that you're seeing, that you're watching me, try to learn just by watching. And you can even be like a sketching, like for instance, I would like to know who in the, in, in the, the people who is here, who uh, is like a really painting with me because I would like to give you time just to, to catch up with me. And something that I suggest to my, to my students is first watch me and just try just to do some here and there strokes. And then try yourself watching again the video and stop and pause the video as many times as you need. Like for instance, the first part is the white, pause the video and paint it. And then the second part, the third part. Because for me, it's going to be easier to be following a video and, and be able to uh, just, just to see what is the next step to be doing, okay? The second paint, even the third paint that you do is going to be your masterpiece. So it's learning, making mistake, trying again, and your masterpiece. So don't worry. It's not about doing at the first time something incredible. It's just about having fun and trying, trying yourself to do it. Okay, so Nobody is trying to, uh, is following. Somebody here is painting, should I keep moving? Okay, let's keep moving. So I'm going to start uh, painting the background. And for that, I'm going to go back and use my flat brush. Yes, see, Jill, that's, I think that's the best way to do it. Exactly like that. So I'm going to grab a little bit of water. Just be careful, we have here a little bit of the red and mixing a little bit of water to make cobalt blue. I'm 
and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint everything with this blue all the background Yeah, it's important guys to, to, to watch the video, stop and just paint a little bit and then go and grab your coffee, your tea, come back. When I feel like I'm done with the paint, I like really to stop and separate from my paint at least six feet and see it again because you will find things. And another thing that is really, I don't know why the brain works like that. When you feel, you know, I'm done, something, imagine I'm done with the painting. So flip it and see it this way and you will find new things that you would like to add or correct. It's something about the, the process of the brain. And also you can just leave it alone for one, two, three days. Just remember to wash your your uh, brushes because acrylic whatever you leave the acrylic and the brushes and the bristles of your brushes are going to be damaged so you need to wash it every time and protect your cloth because acrylic is so bad for the cloth so use an apron i have my apron this is a very old apron maybe it had like when i say like five years or more Thank you for sharing the uh, YouTube link into the group, guys. I really appreciate that. And let me check on you. Oh, thank you, Heather. Oh, thank you, Holly. So I'm going to flip a little bit my canvas. This is another thing. When I'm painting big formats, I like to use my easel. But here that I'm doing these tutorials and for the quality of the video, I prefer to be doing it uh, like in my desk. But for you guys, if you have a canvas, I totally recommend you to use your canvas because the way that you perceive the design and the painting is going to be better, much better, better than if you use it just in your desk. So that's why I'm going to be in need just to move it here and there. And to be sure that I am covering everything what I need. Okay, let's go back. A little, there you go. Okay. So I'm going to clean my brush. And the next part is going to be the white, but we want to have a, a white, no straight white, because we want to build again to keep adding more, um, we in, uh, we call it a glazing or more layers, as some of you know, the, ter the, the name layers, well, we're going to be doing that. So this is my white again, and I'm going to grab a little bit of my cobalt blue again. And this is what we're going to do. Oh, thank you, Fran. So I'm going to take a little bit the extra of the paint and with this part of my brush, I'm going to start like tapping, tapping, tapping. Flip the brush and keep adding this tone. I'm 
me just grab more white Clean my brush again. Grab a little bit more of white. Mix the color. Hey Janet. And I'm going to flip a little bit again. My paint here. brush again grab now more white also if you notice you I use I like to use this part of my brush just to give like different type of like dimension to the snow hi Janet thank you for coming sweetie So yeah, we're building, adding more layers of color. And always working from left to right. And we're going to change the brush in one second. Okay, so now I'm going to move to my filver. This is a short filver one, and I wanna check on you. Yeah, we have a chat room, we have a group in Facebook. I think I can start just working. Yeah, I think I need to like dry this part of the canvas to keep adding more layers of the paint of the white. So I'm going to just add a little bit more because here I can see how we're mixing the colors and I want to have the next tone just a straight white. Okay, so I'm going to use my hair dryer and I'm going to come back with you guys, okay?
okay I'm back and we're going to keep adding white to our snow so still we're going to be using the same brush is my filber short filber and it's filber because it's rounded okay and here is where I want to start adding more like lines define lines here and then you can use even your finger guys to smooth the background the bottom so let's do another one I want to define this one and then smooth with your finger and I'm going to take out this bracelet because it's making too much noise so this part need to be the top part need to be very defined but the bottom one you can smooth with your finger or using another brush I like to use everything what I have including my body when I am painting Okay. Let me check on you. Okay, so far so good. So this video is going to stay here in YouTube for free for everyone but only for my patrons is going to be the outline so yes this is going to be one of many videos that I'm going to be sharing with with you guys so next week is going to be a uh, watercolor and that's the idea that we're going to be moving from one week watercolor and another week with will be acrylic Here is going to be the big pine. That way I'm not getting worried too much about the perfection of this part. Okay. So if you're afraid to get messy, I think watercolor is not going to be your I'm sorry, acrylic is not going to be your your technique. More is going to be watercolor, but if you know, if you're not afraid just to get messy and have paint all over your body then uh, you're in the correct material technique that is acrylic okay so this is the first step and you know even i want to make like here let me you do another piece like big chunk of snow here there you go later we can even add some of the purple that i want to integrate here but that's going to be at the end okay this is the first part of the snow and you can add more like uh, if you add more water into your brush and you have this like a glaze you can even go and with your big flat brush we can do something that the name is glazing if you want to like do not have that many blue that's the perfect way to do it. So add, so add water into your uh, white. 
and glaze everything. Okay, something like this. Okay, so now I want to paint the uh, pine. So let's paint the pine. And I noticed that it's frozen, got frozen the paint. So I want to be using my long number, long round number six. And in my canvas, I have my burn amber. Let me see if, if we can use it again. No, it's frozen again. Not sure why this is happening. But well, let's let's keep working. Um, let me do a trick, okay? Give me one second. I'm connecting again my. I'm connecting again the the palette. And it works good. Yes. See, this is it's about to just just move and learn how to do it. And let me check on you guys. Uh, Beverly, regular wash. You can color over this stuff. I don't think. So I was thinking yeso. You can use yeso as well. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the the pine tree. Okay, so for that I, I have here my burnt amber and I have here my hawker green. So I want to mix it. To have this rich color. And then something I want to add is my darker blue. And like this, you can keep adding colors until you have this rich, dark green. And for the center, even we can even add a little bit of our black. I'm going to put it here. Because you know the center of the pines always are darker, okay? So, here is going to be the pine. So let me show you again, okay? So the beginning of the pine is going to be here. And then use the size of your canvas with your little pinky to decide how far you want your pine. I want it here. And then barely, barely, barely touching the canvas trace this line and guys I use my pinky so I cannot do a, like a straight line just because no <laughs> so now you can use your there are two ways to to do the pines one is going to be with this type of brush need to be a long run and another one is going to be the fan so we're going to start using just I want you to see how I, I roll I twist my brush just to allow very well uh, uh, the paint into my my brush so now i'm going to start doing zigzag and if you notice it's like imagine that it's a triangle invisible triangle so a small and then it need to be bigger, bigger, bigger. So this is the first part. And here is the bottom. And you cannot even see the trunk because it's covering with the snow, okay? So now in the middle, I want you to go and revisit the center part like this and now I want you to grab your fan brush a little bit of water 
and graph very well load your brush with these colors and we're going to use this part of the uh, brush and also this part of the brush so close to the edge I want to just use the size part of my brush and I want to grab more of my brown because I want to have a very rich color a bit of black as well I want you to notice that I'm preparing my, my colors here not directing like in the canvas okay again and when you have a chance it's time to start like flipping the brush see in this point I can even touch the complete area with my whole brush here I want to add a little like some areas that and remember you don't want to have the same size the branches Load your brush again. And the bottom part, I want to have it like more darker. So I'm mixing again my hooker green with a little bit of the amber and a black. again and now I want to just visit with the tip of with the angle of my brush some of the branches and when you're painting like in a desk and you're doing this type of uh, pictures or paintings I want in some point to grab your canvas and put it like vertical and see if you need to correct the size or if you're missing something that's what I'm doing now okay so let's go back I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to grab some of my yellow ochre if you don't have yellow ochre you can mix the cadmium yellow with the burnt amber here is my ochre I want to mix some of the ochre with some of my hawker green the amber more amber okay so I'm going to grab again my fan brush or you can use your long, long brush either way so let me check on you guys so far so good good so I'm going to start in with the tip of my brush some of areas has this tone it's like a dry 
leaves start like dying, changing the colors so the darker color is going to be like at the background and more we add colors we're going to approach more to the snow color little by little just about and I want to keep it darker and also in the center okay you can be doing the same with the fan brush okay so now let me clean this and I'm going to grab a little bit of my white again and a little bit of my cobalt blue again And I'm going to mix these colors because it's going to be the first base of my snow again. So, in the top, let's see, we're going to add some dots of snow. See if I, I need this to get dry. Let's wait a little bit because I'm mixing the color. So, but what we can do is we can uh, start painting our snowman. Okay, so we can even use this color that we have here. So I'm going to add first in the edges with a little bit of water. in my brush to grab some white in the middle and if you notice I'm doing like a smile like the stroke is like a smile because I want to like keep the movement of the volume of the snowball Do you know how the uh, snow is not really like clean? So we can even touch a little bit of the black. Clean your brush. And I'm going to be mixing this black into the blue. The pattern. More white and this is not ready remember we are going to come back to grab a little bit of my cobalt blue I'm going to add this shadow and this part again a little bit of this blue clean my brush let's keep 
keep blending the tones. white and a little, a little, 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 little bit of the black just to change the colors here in the edges let me just grab a little bit of water and he has he's going to have this beautiful scarf so the red is going to be helping us to define more these areas A little bit of water. A little bit of cobalt blue. I'm still using the same brush. My long run number six. It can be a number four, but it need to be long run because you want to have a nice point to be able to work this part so this part need to be darker because the shadow of the heart so a little more of the blue a little bit of the black it's a tip 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 straight white in the center okay so I want to grab a little bit of the red just a tip almost nothing and mix it with my white I'm going to take out the excess of the paint and I want to add these beautiful cheeks clean your brush let me clean it very well and grab some of my white to go around white that's the beauty of um, acrylic that if you add too much you can come back repaint everything and start over a little bit of my blue blue again a little bit of black again so far so good guys shadows is important that we define very well the shadows
Okay, let's try again, guys. Clean your brush. Grab a little bit of the red with white. And let me just move a little bit. There you go. Now I can see. Okay. So we're going to leave it alone. I'm going to clean my brush. It still is wet, so we need to wait a little bit. But we can paint the heart. So for the heart, I want to have this gray. So I'm going to use this baby blue that I have here first. With a little bit of the white and mixing it. And I want to paint this part in gray. Then I'm going to go direct with the black with a little bit of water and mixing water with the black. And from here to here. In the first part of it had Let me check on you guys. It's coming, right? Thank you for staying. Thank you, Holly. If you're here and you're new in the group, I would love to hear from you. Just say hi to know your name, where you're from. And if you're in, uh, in a group in Facebook, why you don't tell, tell us? from which which group you come from so just I'm um, painting a straight black let me just move a little bit just to see the angle to cover very well the canvas we don't want to see white little dots that means that need more paint because you are see through you can see the uh, the white canvas the fabric okay so now I'm going to clean my brush And I want to grab again the gray that we used before. And I want to give some highlights in the middle. Okay. So now. I wanna uh, start painting the scarf. So I have here my red. And this red, we're going to divide it because I wanna have like a rich red. That's mean more intense red. And the way to do it, and let me read to you before moving. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jill, for coming. And thank you for sharing. I'm glad that you found us, me and Willie. 
Welcome Angie. So I'm going to grab a little bit of black and I'm going to be mixing the black with my light red. And if this red is not working the way you want, we can even change and grab. Like what about we add this? Let's see the different deep red because I want to have this intense red, okay? So when I'm painting, this is more like a pink, pinkish. I have like um, the colors that I want to be working with and more I play with the colors, more the paint starts like a moving its own, but its own. In the sense that the painting is going to be telling you <laughs> the color that the paint wants to have. So I have here my red and I'm going to change for my small number two because I want to just paint some part of the scarf, okay? So it's the neck is going to be a little bit in the top of the neck. Something like this. Then the bottom part. I want to have one first. The fringes are, we're going to be painting at the end. And what about it has another the another part right here? Okay. So now I'm going to grab again some of the red with a little 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 bit of water. And I'm going to be painting the red uh, part of the scarf. Hi Noelia. Good to see you here. Thank you for visiting. If your red is uh, transparent like mine, this is what we're going to do. Clean very well your brush, very, very well, because I want to have a solid red. And the only way to have solid red is by applying white. So I'm going to leave this part alone, but I want to apply white here. This scarf has, scarf has some uh, strips, but you can have yours just strip color, one color, one solid color. And this is exactly what happened with the acrylic. You're going to be painting over painting. Yeah, the pine tree is coming. We need to wait this part to get dry because I want to add more snow, okay? No more. I'm going to start adding snow too. You know, it's like everything. When you're painting, when you're cooking, when you're studying, everything. It has a process that we cannot skip, right? Okay, so let me show you. This is the idea. I just I need to wait this part to get dry to keep adding more color, okay? So let me just maybe add a little bit here, even if it changed to like a pink, it doesn't matter because I'm going to be adding red and I'm going to use my hair dryer, okay? Don't go. And I'm going to leave you with this.
Okay, I'm back. And here's our guy, it's already dry. I'm going to clean my brush very, very well. And pine is ready as well. So let me work with the scarf and then we're going to move to the pine. Really, Janie, snow is coming. This is going to be my second layer with the white and then we can add the red strips. And it's like it's amazing to see how the paintings start like a moving along. And I love to see that. So I'm going to leave it alone and I'm going to use my white and a little bit of my cobalt blue again. Oops, a little bit, not too much. Too much. With more white. To have again this baby blue. I'm going to roll my brush. Just be careful because I have a little, I can see a little bit of the red and we don't want to mix with that color. So let me just clean it very well. And now grab again a little bit of this like type of like a baby blue. And hi Emily. And let's start adding some dots with this blue. And we don't want to cover the background. We want to add some snow, but at the same time we want to see the darker color. So something that I imagine is like a for instance this branch. So the snow is going to be in the top. Then here And some here. Let's keep building towards the bottom of the tree. I want to be sure that I'm not missing any spot. And now that I have this brush, I want to clean it. Well, you guys, Northern United States, you really, when it's snowing, it's serious, right? 
at least your houses and everything you have everything ready for that type of weather right so I'm adding a little bit of black just in the middle and here as well on the bottom So let's go back to the snowman and we can prepare his face and clean. So I have here my yellow and I'm going to grab a little bit of our light red because I want to have this light orange. So I have light orange and dark orange. So I'm going to divide it, print it here, grab a little bit of more red, and have my dark orange. Okay, so let me clean my brush because I want to be painting with the tip, just with the tip of the brush. Be careful, do not touch your canvas if it's wet. So we're going to add a beautiful nose. First is going to be the darker color and then we're going to move to a lightest color. to have a little bit of the light orange I have here my light orange and let me read to you 45, 60, 53 guys I don't want to even say <laughs> mine because you're going to what is summer or what so i'm going to add some of the light colors of this orange and the top of our dark orange so we need to decide where the highlight i have a happy accident here where the highlights where is the lightest part of the day is it day or it is like it's afternoon or it's going to like sunset it looks more like a sunset okay so I want to grab my yellow and I'm going to add into my right side some of this yellow that is going to be my highlight okay so then with the back part of my brush I'm going to touch the black I'm going to load my black and close to the carrot I want to add two little dots it okay then we, we want to this to to get dry because then I'm going to add a little in the bottom a little bit of like white because you don't want to have like a straight a straight um, circles so now I want to use my new brush 68 degrees that's good that's really good so I'm going to add water 
load my brush with black and before even using it you can just do this to take out a little bit of the paint okay so here we have one cheek and another cheek you know we can even you know what i see let me paint more the cheek i want the cheek more like a little higher clean water and we have still a little bit of the color here If you notice, I take out some of the paint because I just I want to go and move a little bit higher. This part. Mm -hmm. So now. And you know guys I recommend you really to move move your canvas very slow I don't know you guys but, but when I'm doing lines I don't even breathe I don't want to breathe <laughs> because I want to have like a straight line so let's go back to the heart mm, thank you Beverly and I want to define better this heart brush and let's go back with the back part of the brush load it with black let's go back with the red a little bit of water just to mix it and now we can start painting our skirt you can use a flat brush let's use a flat brush a tiny flat brush is going to be easier in this case and this is a this is why I'm I was telling you before that it's good to have all your brushes close to you because if in case you need it you have it so let me put this back into the water I'm using the angle of my brush to helping me to make a straight lines
just move a little bit the canvas because I want to be sure that I'm doing correct this line so yeah it's good to have all your brushes close to you change with the one that we were using before the too long small one and load it with the red and let me check on you guys I love to see when the puppies jump into the snow. I don't know if my dogs will see the snow if they will freak out. <laughs> so let's clean very, 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 very well this brush. Because we're going to add some white. So grab a clean white. With a little bit of water. I love it snow, but I, I like more to feel protected. I'm going to change the, the brush and just I want to just add as much as I can white in these areas because we need to change brushes let's see if I can use this I feel so excited with when I have a new brush I'm loading with white this little detail that we need to be adding so I'm going to grab a little bit of my black again and mixing it to have this gray because we want to add a little shadows into the scarves and let me check with you chocolate and relax wow that's a mess So on the edges of the white, I am adding a little bit of this gray. And I'm going to go back with this little thin brush. More white here. a little bit of gray and let's go back to the spine while this is dry so I have here my white and we're going to go back and add some of the white into the blue let me check on you Yeah, I don't like to be wet. 
so I'm going to go back and add some dots in the top of the light blue and by doing this you're going to be separating the background 100% that way need to be a straight white the widest that you have in your paint so the light blue is going to give you that shadow of the snow and now this white is going to actually giving you the light the brightest part of the the snow the highlight okay So let's grab more white and I'm going to add a little bit of snow here very thick paint Okay, so now I want to work a little more with this part of the snow. So let's go back with the filbert. And remember that we have the this color at the beginning that I add the product. Well, I want to use it now. So it's very light, like uh, like watery. And this color is going to connect. Oops, too much. So just add water. I want to separate the snow that is in the and the grass, <laughs> dirt, than the snow that is in the pine. So by adding this color. Now you're going to see the difference. And let me check your comments. Our babies for babies. Oh, I don't know if my guys will love snow. Oh, that's beautiful, Chris. Thank you for sharing.
so here we can see like uh, the I want to say banks of the snow so that one we wanted to have it white so this color is going to be after like here we can even make more here so let me just grab new clean white by adding some like highlights you could keep like building the the floor the ground Labradors are like a human. I don't have a Labrador, but one of my girlfriends has, and I don't know, it's like a, they understand like what you're talking. They're super smart guys. mixing this like purplish with the white I'm going to flip a little bit my canvas because I want to add this color this part and then we're going to be adding its hands I want to forget its hands And we are going to come back to the scarf. Yeah, it's like a process and I'm not in a hurry. I hope you are not too. <laughs> in my brush and I want to grab more white let's add the hands so with your liner let me check on you fringe yes I'm going to be adding thank you Janie yeah the scarves I'm going to add the fringe I just I want to add wait a little bit more that uh, is dry because I want to give more uh, color and texture to the red part more shadows like here I don't know if you can see the black area so I want to add these shadows and more like texture to the buttons and now we're going to be doing the the hands thank you for remembering me that I really appreciate that so I want to grab a little bit of black here and a little bit of my amber burnt amber And from here,
So did you uh, have a chance to share the YouTube channel into uh, the new group, just in case? I was wondering, a little bit of black. a little part with no you know this is a, a branch so we need to make it sure like it looks like a branch okay this is the first then we're going to add some snow and now the second one because this is very close more thick in this part to make it at least same as much as you can I'm going to clean my brush and grab the thin one that we have here and just clean it very very well and I want to have a clean white, so I'm going to grab more white. And I want to add some snow, very thick. this part here and a little bit in the the next area here is like a whatever you feel like the snow is stuck and the same here bit here and now that I have white I just want to add some texture here and I want to grab a little bit of my baby blue that we have in this part with a little bit of black to make it like a grayish. Oh, thank you, Jan uh, Barbara. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Beverly. And after this, I'm going to be working scarves. So with this red that we have here, now I'm going to add a little bit of black again because I want 
just give a little of different tones to this part Sometimes details, <coughs> it take a little longer, but it make a huge difference when you're painting something. clean my, my brush <coughs> sorry guys <laughs> take out the excess of the paint and the water and I'm gonna make light blended and now I wanna use this red to give like an extra highlight just in the middle or whatever you feel is going to look cute So now I'm going to do the fringe, fringes, the fringe. So I'm going to use first the lightest red. Well, I changed my mind. First, we're going to use the darkest red. I'm just loading my brush with the darkest red. your brush very well and let me read to you guys oh thank you Holly you can do it Helen and we can work together if you want just watch a little bit stop and try to do it I'm sure if you do that, uh, you will be able to follow the steps. So in the top, I want to add this red. I want to clean very well this new brush. And I want to just revisit my white. So I have here new white, remember? With my filver. Doing some taps, taps. Tapping, tapping, tapping. Here I want just to add an extra texture here and close up his mouth. Oh, and with the small brush and clean, load some white and we a little bit of white because we're going to be working with the tip okay so then go back and add a little bit of the bluish that we have here with a little bit of the cobalt blue And 
revisit this area a little bit of black and let me check on you guys thank you Fran yeah sure anytime Ellen yeah, ceramics is uh, like it's huge. I tried like years ago and I love it. With a beautiful brush, clean your brush and grab some white. Let me grab some water. Yeah, ceramics is, is beautiful. And what we're going to do is one dot, two, one dot, and two. And in this part that it has the, the yellow, maybe we can add some highlights like this. Two little dots. Let me just grab better white for the buttons. This outside line is going to be helping you just to understand that is um, the bottom is rounded. Okay, so with this white, you can even revisit some of your white areas and this the scarf also need to have some snow. Here I want to just add another like little highlight of white okay and now guys the fun part let's do some splashes so with my white and a lot of water and let me check on you guys Yeah, ceramic is beautiful. So let me give you a tip here. If you wait this to get dry, super, super dry, and then you wet the whole picture, the whole painting with a big brush, and then you add the splash, the splash are going to look beautiful. It's like a semi-transparent and then you wait to get dry and do it again but this time with a dry so you're going to have two type of splashes So when you are doing this, I just recommend you that before you, when you finish, go and check in the mirror because if you plan to go somewhere, you're going to have pain all over you. And then you can even use the back part of a a brush and move all over the background 
with different sizes of snowflakes and we're going to now paint one which is I want to add this part of it it hard more snowflake more snowflakes give me just one little second da -da 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 -da. this part is so much fun it's relaxing for me Okay, let me check you. You're home, good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a snowflake. So with my long one, grab some white, and I'm going to move the opposite. what I'm going to do is first to pick one I'm going to make just one let's do it here so just say one make one line two three and four so this need to be a little bigger okay so now you need to paint like a V then a little circle a little dot and there you go you have your snowflake So I will wait this to get dry because I can even add some like glitter okay so I think it's done guys and remember when you feel ah, I'm done it's, it's it's okay I like the way it is leave and then come back in 20 minutes or next day separate from your painting and then come back and you will notice that you miss something that you want to add something or something I promise you so just let me just correct this little dot here there you go okay so I think I like the way it is let me let me check on you guys read to you guys oh I'm so happy you like it yes please share share your ceramics in the group and the facebook group in patreon i would like to see it today is friday fridays we share everything remember so let me just put and take out this like that you guys can see both so this is one and this is another one so same idea just different tones and there are like a siblings okay so um, thank you for coming today guys i really appreciate your support that you are here oh thank you guys i'm glad that you like it barbara thank you fran janie yes it's a good start it, starting right Thank you for your support guys. If you have any comment and or if you decide to paint this painting, I would love to see it in the group. So this is the group. Let me show you the name of the group. It's Let's Get Creative. It's a, a painting group. It's acrylic watercolor and tutorials by Yvette Raymond Levy. That's me. So uh, 
feel free to join me and uh, we're going to be sharing more and more okay so also um what else guys i have coloring books yeah let's talk a, a little bit about i have 16 coloring books and let me sh let me just show you that i'm here hey <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk a little bit so I have 16 coloring books and actually I'm waiting for the last book that is a Christmas 12 days of Christmas is activities that you can be coloring with your family your kids and with with your grandmother your mom or even with your with yourself and it's going to be very nice because you are going to have four different sections that you can be uh, coloring during the 12 days of Christmas. So this book is has a hardcover and it has 55 pictures. This is one of the biggest, um, actually the biggest uh, coloring book so far. And I love it because it is a hardcover. So I'm super excited. It's going to be a very special edition. So uh, this is my, um, my, my Etsy shop. If you would like just to visit there, you can find PDF books or if not, you can go on Amazon and look for Yvette Ramos Levy and it's going to show you all the coloring books that I have so far. So again, thank you so much guys for coming today. Me and Willie appreciate your time invested here with me. And if you decide to paint it, please come to our group and share with us your interpretation of this tutorial. I would love to see it, okay? Thank you guys, let me check on you before leaving. Um, thank you, Jill. Thank you, Beverly and Heather. Sunday is your painting day, good. Thank you for coming, Chris and Janie and Fran and Helen and Barbara and James, all of you. Thank you so much. So let's let's catch up and have a good one. And remember, guys, happy coloring and of course happy painting. Bye bye, guys. <laughs>